Hello you guys and welcome to a brand new character build video with me Sherman. Today guys I bring you guys something new, something different, and something specially requested by one of you. Now this person requested a Dark Elf Sork bow bow build basically um, for solo play. And I got to thinking, you know what? I've got something that might just do the trick. Now, they wanted this in heavy armor, and I'm going to tell you how you can set this up for heavy armor if you want to do it. Um, but you're going to find this might be a little bit more enticing and a little bit more fun. So, disclaimer, this is a roleplay casual build. It is not meta, and it is made for the purpose of solo play. Now, you can play this in a group if you want. It actually works really well as a ranged um, kind of DPS type character. But this is the Storm Ranger. So, if you're asking me for to challenge me, <laughs> the challenge is accepted. Here you go. So, Storm Ranger. This is a Dark Elf Sorcerer. Primarily has to be a Dark Elf Sorcerer. Otherwise, this build will not work as good. Khajiit can play this build as well. Any race can actually pull it off, but some races are going to be a little better than others with this. Dark Elf just happens to be the best. As you can see, we have 21k Magicka, 21k Max Health, 31k Max Stamina. We do have 1,013 Mag Recovery with a 842 Stamina Recovery. We do have 2,792 Weapon Damage with 2,075 Spell Damage. 51% Weapon Critical, 35% Spell Critical, and this is unbuffed. I will show you what this looks like buffed here in a second. Spell resistance comes in at 13,000, physical resistance at 13,000. And like I said, when I get to the gear, I'll explain how you can make this in heavy armor if you want to play it that way. Moving on, we do have minor berserk at all times. We do use the Thief Mundus Stone. We are using the Clan Fear for when we play solo. And then uh, we do use Tristat Food. All right, here we go. Moving on to the gear sets. So I do have dual wield, just in case I want to use dual wield if I'm, you know, feeling funky. And then the the foods we're using is tri-stat food. We are using crown uh, the crown store power pots, but you can also craft these or get these off of the guild traders from other players. And basically spell power pots and weapon power pots. So, or stamina power pots and magic power pots. These are what they are. Really good for this purpose, you're primarily going to be using the spell power pots, and you'll see why. So, as you guys can see, pretty simple um, stuff here, normal like usual. tri -stat food, uh, which is down here, the long fin pasty. We are using the, the two power pots, plus we have the crown pot if we want, or the tripod, if we want all three resources. Now, let's go over the set. Starting with the first set, we are using Slime Craw. Slime Craw is really good for this because it gives you spell crit and it gives you weapon crit. And it grants you minor berserk at all times, increasing all your damage done by 8%. This includes magic and physical damage. All right, moving on. The next set we are using, of course, is Storm Masters. That's kind of the name of the game with this one. It is all about doing that damage and this thing works out pretty pretty good so as you can see this thing does weapon critical on two piece three piece weapon critical uh four piece adds weapon damage and then the five piece when you deal critical damage with a fully charged heavy attacks your light attacks deal an extra 1852 shock damage for 20 seconds so that means all light attacks will deal shock damage on top of their regular damage here's a secret start with, start with a heavy attack Moving on to the next set, we are using Netch's Touch. Another great set. Uh, this does this one drops in Darkshade Caverns, and this one drops in Tempest Island. And the monster set drops in the uh, Way West Sewers. So those are where you get these sets. They are all dungeon sets. They are really easy to get, though. Uh, this one, you can farm this on normal. Uh, this you might want to farm on normal to get the blue version and then farm it on veteran to get the gold uh, to get the purple version And then you'll have to upgrade to gold But you purple will be fine as well The reason why Natchez touch works so well with this is you get 833 spell critical a thousand max magica extra spell damage and then 400 spell damage to your shock damage abilities 
This does not apply to your Storm Master set, but it does apply to a lot of the abilities you do use. All right, now let's go ahead and go over the traits and the uh, enchants. So starting with the helm, we are using an invigorating helm with a tristat enchant. Chest is also invigorating with tristat, and then the leggings are invigorating with tristats. That's how we can get these higher uh, recovery pools here. And it's just enough to get us through the content. Like, it's just enough to, to, to get us through without needing any, um, like, major resource management. Because we are using both magic and stamina. All right. So on the smaller pieces, all stamina and divines to take advantage of the Munda Stones. The invigorating, like I said, is to basically build up your uh, recovery rate. And then moving on to the jewelry. We have two jewelry here with um, weapon damage. Because we get the extra 400 spell damage from shock, we're going to use the extra weapon damage to boost our weapon damage. So... And then the last piece here has magic recovery infused on the jewelry here. Now you can change this to stamina, but it's it's really not necessary. And then on to the weapons. We are using dual bows. Starting with the bow on the first bar, we are using a Netch's Touch Mernhone bow with shock damage. You can use other things for this. You can use sharpened, you can use um, infused. Pretty much anything will work, uh, but Nernhone will be the best for damage output. And then on the back bar, we have an infused bow with a weapon damage and spell damage enchant. This is boost our weapon and spell damage bar by 452 for five seconds. And we'll be able to keep this up in our rotation because of how things are set up. All right, now that you guys have seen this, I am gonna tell you about the two daggers. We have one with a shock damage infused and then one with Nernhone with a absorbed stamina. This is if you use dual wield on the front bar, bow on the back bar. And that's only if you want to use this. It's not necessary. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our skills. So starting with the class skills, make sure you unlock all your class skills and passives. Make sure you get the, the unstable clan fear because this is going to be your primary hunting pet that you take out with you into the world. It does a decent amount of damage and it also can heal you. So it's really nice. Another thing um, I want to put down here is just because... Uh, I want to have it ready. And then Storm Calling, make sure you unlock everything in here that deals with shock damage except for Hurricane. You want Hurricane to be physical damage. And the reason why is because you have higher physical crit. And you want that higher physical crit for your Power Surge to crit heal you. So every time you heal or you do critical strikes, you heal yourself for X amount of damage every one second. So every time this ticks damage, you're basically healing yourself. So, and it lasts for 15 seconds. Really good. It also gives you Major Ward and Major Resolve, increasing spell and physical resist, um, and increasing your movement speed by 10%. All right. Now, moving on to weapons. Dual wield, unlock the skills and abilities that would best reflect you as a player. And then bow, uh, we do have certain ones that I did unlock specifically for this, like ballista, if you want to use the ballista bow thing, like on the back bar or even on the front bar really good and then we also have magnum shot now magnum shot is kind of here for more or less in those situations where you might be in a dungeon and you don't want enemies getting close to you so you shoot this and it'll knock you back away or knocks them back um and then moves you back six meters as well so just a good way to keep enemies off you and that's that make sure you get the skills and passives that you want for this. Now moving on to the armor passives, light armor, you're gonna want the top three, medium armor, all of them, and then of course with heavy armor, you're gonna want the top three. Now moving on to world skills. Now you can be a vampire or a werewolf with this if you so choose. I just like it the way it is because it just works so damn well. <laughs> all right, so we have soul assault, really good skill, um, ultimate. We also have consuming trap. If you guys don't know, consuming trap's actually really good if you're having um, issues with like resource management because you can put this on your bar and it does do magic damage over 10 seconds but it, when it ends and if the enemy dies uh, you get you fill a soul gem or even without filling a soul gem you still get 10% um, of your max health magic and stamina back automatically 
So it's really kind of a nice one. Soul Summon's really good, and Soul Lock, of course. And then moving on to Guild Skills. Fighter's Guild, we do have all the Fighter's Guild abilities. Same thing with Mage's Guild and Passives. And we unlock the ones that best fit us um, in each one. So in the Fighter's Guild, I'm going to go over these real quick. We have Silver Leash in case we need something to pull enemies to us so they're not at ranged. We have um, Ring of Preservation for if we want to play a little bit of support in our groups, if we are playing in a group. Evil Hunter is here if you want that extra critical rating, but you don't really need it. <clears throat> and then Rearming Trap is here all the time use kind of thing, because when you get enemies close to you, you can just throw this down and it'll put Minor Force out. It's really good. <clears throat> now, Mage's Guild, again, unlocks specific abilities that would best reflect our ability to play this character, like G Degeneration to boost our spell. Uh, ability and give us a heal over time instead of using crit surge so we can use a, a stamina power pot on the front bar and that's only if we want to do that and then the volcanic runes just a really cool trap psychic order same thing unlock the abilities and skills i thought would best reflect this character and then same thing with the undaunted passive or active abilities and make sure you get these passives it's really going to help you out Moving on to Alliance skills, unlock the ones that I felt would best reflect this character. Same thing with support. And then Racial's Dark Elf. Now here's why Dark Elf is going to be so good for this. You get Dynamics, increases max magic and stamina by 1875. And you get Ruination, increases weapon and spell damage by 258. Now they do get Resist Flame and Immunity to Burning effects, which is kind of nice. But we're not too worried about that. Alchemy, Medicinal Use, Provisioning, Gourmand and Connoisseur. Always good to get these um, with the with the provisioning and the alchemy. It's really good. All right, now we're going to go over the skills on the bars. Starting with the front bar, we have Daedric Prey. We have this here because this will apply a, a rune on the enemy, dealing X amount of magic damage to the target and an extra amount of damage to nearby enemies after six seconds. While the curse is active, your pet deals an additional 40% damage to the target, and you can have only one Daedric Prey active at a time. So you want to keep this applied as much as possible to the main target you're fighting, so your pet will stay on them and, and just dish out damage. Next up, Venom Arrow. Awesome ability. Does damage up front, does damage over time, and then on top of that, it can if you hit an enemy who's casting, you can interrupt them, set them off balance, and stun them for 3 seconds. Our next ability, now you can use either more for this, but I choose a focus aim because this does give us a little bit of physical penetration by 1320. It does really good damage up front, um, lots of damage, and then the, the minor fracture of it lasts for 10 seconds, so it's kind of nice. Next, we have Lightning Flood. Now, you can use Liquid Lightning or Lightning Flood. Either one works. They both do a lot of shock damage over time, over eight seconds. Well, this one, I think, is a little bit uh, shorter than the, the Liquid Lightning. I, I don't re really remember, but this has a greater radius of, of damage that it does. An ally standing in this area can activate the Synergy, so that's really good. And then we have our Clan Fear. Now, our Clan Fear does a little bit of physical damage while it's Tell Strike. Hits nearby enemies for more physical damage after one second. Uh, once summoned, you can activate the Clan Fear special ability, healing you and the Clan Fear for X amount of health. So this is how you can keep you and the Clan Fear alive while you're playing solo. The next ability is more or less a the primary ability that you're going to use a lot of for your ultimate, and that is Power Overload. Now this does uh, light and heavy attacks uh, basically become like force powers so you do this and your character shoots lightning balls and then you can do like this and yeah it's pretty cool so now I gotta get rid of my my clan fear because otherwise you won't stop <clears throat> all right so that is um, the the overload the overloads really good if you let it build up to a lot of um, ultimate because then you can just unleash with this and every time the nice thing about this is every time that you use it um it does greater damage so light attacks uh deal lightning lightning bolts deal eleven thousand shock damage to an enemy up to 32 meters away and then heavy attacks can deal thirteen thousand damage um and yeah and uh, attacks deplete ultimate until you run out or toggle it off so it's really cool 
Next, onto the back bar, we have our rearming trap. Now, you can use either rearming trap or the range trap. Either one of them works out really well. I like rearming trap in case something gets close, because it'll grab them and hold them in place. And if I have magnum shot set up, I can just use that and bounce back away from them, and then just take them out. Next ability we have is Endless Hail. This does uh, launch a multitude of arrows into the sky to rain down, dealing X amount of damage to enemies in the target area every so many seconds for 10 seconds. Um, another thing that you can use back here is Acid Spray. It's really good. So, And then Endless Hail, really good. And then our next ability is Crit Surge, or Power Surge. Power Surge gives you both Major Brutality and Major Sorcery, increasing both spell and weapon damage. Um, but we don't get really high spell critical, so we use this to get that higher spell critical. And then while active, dealing a, a, a critical strike heals you for X amount of health. And then, yeah, it's really cool. And then we have Hurricane. This deals X amount of physical damage every second for 15 seconds. And the wind grows in size and grows in strength up to 150% more damage and up to 9 meters in size. And then, of course, gives you Major Ward and Major Resolve. And then moving on, we have the Clan Fear here again, because you have to have a double bard. It kind of sucks, but it's nice. And then the last ultimate we have is Summon Charge Astronauts. Now, this will summon an astronaut that deals X amount of shock damage and stuns enemies for three seconds. And then the, the, the astronaut will continue to shock the closest enemy, dealing X amount of damage every one second, and periodically deals X amount of damage to enemies around it. An ally can activate the, the Charge Lightning Synergy, granting an ally and the Atronach Major Berserk, increasing their damage done by 25% for 8 seconds. So this is a really nice one if you can get this off on the um, enemies and you have somebody with you to activate Synergy. And that, my friends, is the Storm Ranger's skills. Now we're going to take a look at the CP, starting with the Red Tree. We have 56 in Ironclad. This reduces damage taken from direct damage stacks by 20%. We have 20 in a medium armor focus. This increases your physical resistance by 1900. We also have 18 in the spell shield, increasing your spell resistance by 1729. Moving on over here, we have 31 in the thick skin, reducing your damage taken from damage over time effects by 13%. 43 in the hardy. Uh, reducing your damage taken from physical poison disease damage by 10%, 43 into elemental defender, reducing your damage taken from flame frost shock and magic damage by 10%, and then over here we have 40 into bastion, increasing the effectiveness of your damage shields by 16%, 19 into quick recovery, increasing your healing received by 5%, mainly these two are here, uh, well this one's here to, to, for if you need to use a damage shield with your pet, this way you can use your class damage shield and it'll apply to both you and your pet and it'll give you, you know, 50% of your max health no matter what. All right, moving on. We have 40 in a Warlord, which re reduces your blue uh, break free cost, blue, <laughs> break free cost by 16%. We have 16 in a Sprinter, reducing your Sprint cost by 10%. 16 in a Bashing Focus, reducing your Bash cost by 10%. And then moving on to the middle green tree here, we have 75 in the Mooncalf, increasing your stamina recovery by 14%, 43 in Arcanus, increasing your mag recovery by 10%, and then we have 40 in the Tumbling, reducing your dodge roll cost by 16%, 40 in the Shadow Ward, reducing your block cost by 16%, and then moving on to the blue tree. 43 in the Blessed, increasing your healing done by 10%, 23 in Elfborn, increasing your critical healing and critical damage by 10%, 43 in an Elemental Expert, increasing your Flame Frost Shock and Magic Damage by 10%. If you didn't know, Sorks get 5% Physical Damage Increase and 5% Shock Damage Increase. That's the reason why I use Lethal Arrow, instead, or I use the Focus Aim instead of Lethal, lethal Arrow. Uh, focus Aim does Physical Damage, so it's actually boosted even more. Moving on over here, we have 35 in a Physical, physical Expert, uh, Weapon Expert. This is just basically to boost our Bow Damage with its light and heavy attacks by 20%. And then we have 40 in the Mastered Arms, increasing our damage done with direct damage attacks by 16%. So this applies mainly to our light attacks that we do in our rotation and stuff. If we throw a lot of more heavy attacks, that even applies to that. Moving on over here, we have 43 in the Mighty, increasing your physical poison and disease damage by 10%. Remember, they get 5% physical damage increase. That does apply here, so we actually get 15%. Then we have 23 in the Precise Strikes, increasing your critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities by 10%. And 
and then 20 and a Thaumaturge, increasing your damage done with damage over time effects by 9%. Now, a lot of people are going to wonder, this thing, um, you are, are going to wonder, you said you were going to tell us how to play this with heavy armor. And I am. So if you guys want to change out the Storm Master sets for more of a um, heavy armor setup, what I would do is I'd get this in, in um, medium, this in heavy, and then I would craft uh, Hunting's Rage for this or Night Mother's Gaze. Either one of these would be really good. Night, Night Mother's Gaze would actually give you extra physical penetration, which might help you out better. So that's something you can do if you want. But I do like this setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action, shall we? So, the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to make sure our bars are, are... We're on the right bar. We are. We're going to drink our Magicka Power Pie. And we're going to do our rotation. Oops. Okay, so we did about 20k DPS. That's not too bad, right? And you got to remember, we have no uh, penetration value whatsoever. So we do, we get 3,000 spell damage, and we get 3,892 weapon damage. 51% crit here, 45% crit here. So we are still critting quite a bit. As you can see here, we actually did more critical damage than normal damage. All right. Now, let's go see what this thing is like on the big man. So you guys can see its overall uh, super damage, if you want. If you will, this is more for organized group play, um, but this way you guys can see what it's like. So, Oops. to get that crit surge going with the that lightning that's it really I keep trying to hit R and it won't go off there we go one two There you guys go. 30k DPS with this build, just like it is. Um, it's actually really powerful, but I gotta I gotta de-summon my 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 clan for other way to just keep attacking that thing. Um, but yeah, it's actually really good in its damage output and its and its survivability kind of thing because we have the clan fear. But I will show you guys this in a dungeon, and you guys can make your own decisions from there. Now this is the setup I would primarily use if I was playing this as a solo build just the way it is. I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't even put a shield on it because you don't really need it um, for solo play. All right, so let's go ahead and head to our favorite dungeon for testing right now, and that is Depths of Malatar. Turn on a light here because it's getting a little dark outside. Just kidding. Sun's still out. It's just starting to set. Depths of Malatar, by the way, did come out with Wrathstone DLC. It's kind of one of the newer dungeons. A lot of people say it's one of the more difficult dungeons besides the uh, other Wrathstone dungeon. So, really like it, though. It's really fun to play in. Oh, and just so you guys can see this, when you're in a group, an organized group, you'll have roughly about 4,559 uh, weapon damage, 
with 3,632, 51% spell critical, 58% weapon critical. So, just being clear on that. They're all dead. Now we're going to go fight the boss. This is where I'm going to need a shield. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take off the Daedric Cray. I'm going to move these two abilities over. And we're going to put on our class shield um, here. So this way we have survivability. Suck lightning, dude. Where is he hiding? Yes, I really like playing this build, if you didn't know. So the person who gave me this challenge, by the way... I, I want to thank you for giving me something that was, was just a, such a cool, fun, amazing build to play. Um, it, is, it is super cool to play. It is just, it's practically unkillable. So I can just stand here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let it kill me so I can respawn and do all that fun stuff. But yeah, that is the Storm Ranger, guys. I hope you guys liked it. And like I said, to the person who gave me the challenge to come up with this build and try and create it, challenge accepted. I hope this was good enough. And if it was, you guys know what's coming next. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in-game. Bye.